Jake Knapp is the inventor of the design sprint and the New York Times bestselling author of the book Sprint. He's also the co-founder of Character, a venture fund for early stage startups. How and why did you start using Miro? I came from this position of thinking, I don't want to be doing stuff online to thinking now when I do a sprint in person with a company, it's like, we're going to use Miro, even though we're all in the same room, because that's a better way for us to get this work done. As an investor, we're basically investing in their ability to solve problems. We're saying, we think this group of people is going to be able to solve a problem in a really great way and create value by doing it. And actually, you need to give people the tools that can help them make decisions, help them collaborate, help them visualize and see things in a different way. And Miro does all those things. So to me, at least as an investor, I'm thinking, give the team the tools that are going to help them think, that are going to make the most, brighten their, their skills as smart folks. And Miro is at the top of that list. MSW. Feminist Buzzkills Live, the show that exists because navigating the current abortion restrictions is harder than completing the giant slalom. I'm Liz Winston, and with me, as always, are my fellow Buzzkills and co-conspirators, Moji Alabodeel. Hey. And Marie Khan. Hello, everyone. Coming up on today's show, if you're like us, your Arizona rage is usually Kristen cinema induced But just wait till you hear about the anti-abortion laws happening down there. Phoenix abortion provider, Dr. Deshaun Taylor, here to fill us in on just how bad it is. Plus, Liz will be talking to some dope comedians. True Facts Marie, my favorite political comedy duo, Frangela, are stopping by. But before all that, meet my co-host, who is a mystery, Mr. Funk. Uh, and Moji <laughs> is going to kick us off with some BS that's popping in Oklahoma. Oh my God, so much BS. A few weeks ago, we were all like, Oklahoma has lost their damn mind with this 30-day abortion ban. But this week, Oklahoma said, hold my beer, and hit us with an Orwellian pregnant person database bill. It's called the Every Mother Matters Act, or EMMA, and it requires pregnant people who are considering abortion to call a state-run hotline and get advice from someone who may or may not have medical training to talk about anything besides abortion. They'll walk you through adoption, housing resources, um, childcare, employment support, basically all of the social services that Republicans who make these bills don't fund, but they will not tell you how not to be pregnant. And then after this conversation that nobody asked for, they'll issue a unique identifying password to the patient that they'll have to take to the abortion clinic. And then the clinic would be required to keep that particular number on their medical record for seven years. So obviously this bill is just about tracking pregnant people. And as we anticipate Rose fall in this coming spring and brace for more investigations of pregnancy outcomes, this will just be another tool in the surveillance state basically. Wow, okay. <laughs> Where are there not red flags in that? <laughs> Full on red flags everywhere. It's a and it's sea not of poppies. It's just a <laughs> sea of red flag poppies. And it's not far fetched that someone will call this hotline, get an identifying number, possibly decide to not have an abortion, have a miscarriage, and somehow end up indicted for personhood crime. You think this sounds crazy, but uh, in October 2021, just months ago, an indigenous woman, Brittany Pula, was sentenced to four years in jail for a 17 week miscarriage in, oh, in, in Oklahoma. Yeah, Oklahoma. Oklahoma. You know, <laughs> it's so wild to me because first of all, giving someone an identifying number historically is not great. But second of all, I think what a lot of folks don't know this isn't the first time this has happened. Many states have tried this. Some states have passed it. And oftentimes these experts, they hook you up on a hotline or at one of these fake ass clinics. 
And what they do is they get enough information from you and they get your phone number, which means they can do something called geofencing. So there's been reports of people who have gone to a fake clinic and then ended up getting an abortion and sitting in the waiting room for their abortion, they get a text from the creepy fake ass clinic that says, don't murder your baby today. It's a fucking mess. That, fucking that is just visualizing that type of setting and context that this supports for folks this emma act way more like a karen act and you know think about these the karens are the politicians they're in line legislating their right to circumvent hipaa and access your personal pregnancy information it makes me think of missouri's incredibly creepy health and human services director who tracked the periods of folks visiting the state's only clinic the planned parenthood and was outed for doing it in 2019 this and this whole just all of it the whole take a ticket this this meat counter style abortion queue and they know for seven years what if you need two abortions in seven years what 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 then it's so fucked up marie i want you to carry that rage to florida because shit ain't good there either no no liz in true mississippi mimicry as we await the supreme court's decision on dobbs v jackson women's health organization florida republicans have taken to their etch-a-sketches to craft a 15-week abortion ban lawmakers have referred to this literal forced mandate to pregnancy as both generous and reasonable and extolled extolled how this isn't an all-out ban governor DeSantos and company take some fucking notes Generous is when your bartender buys you a shot and it's the nice tequila. Generous here, is when here. someone hugs your leader. Generous is when the bus driver sees you running and waits. Not when you back legislation that steps on the necks of pregnant people and rolls your state's abortion limit from 24 weeks to 15, including no exceptions for rape, incest, or human trafficking. Keep in mind, in 2016, Florida felt the need to run a billboard campaign to remind men, and I quote, She's your daughter, not your date. How about we don't rape our daughters or our dates, Florida man, and we let people access abortion. Now you have the GOP swamp pissed because this ban isn't Texas style enough. It's not limiting and cruel enough. And on the other side, the side of human rights, you have abortion providers and funds who are worried, both for the Gator State residents who now will age out from getting care, and also for those who travel to Florida from states and countries with even more draconian abortion laws. This emphatically non-generous and terrible, no good, very bad abortion ban will be voted on by the Florida House next Wednesday. And the odds of it passing and in place on July 1st are good. Wait, isn't this the ban that they locked out everyone who didn't agree with out of the committee, right? Like people had come from miles to fight this and they were like, uh, no, we will hear no dissenting arguments, thank you, and passed it anyway. What hubris from these gerrymandered safe politicians? I mean, I love the fact that um, ge- it's like generous. I don't think generous means what you think it means. I mean, this yeah. is Florida literally did not expand Medicaid, does zero things to be generous. And also, you know that DeSantis generous uh, when it comes to probably his penis is uh, he couldn't satisfy, uh, I don't know, a Barbie doll. Like, I just feel like the dude doesn't know generous from Shinola. (laughs) You know, what's also disgusting, Liz, that Florida Republicans straight up said they don't want their state to be a destination for abortion. Traveling for abortion care is never a vacation. This is a cruel insult to pregnant communities who are trying to access safe and legal care. It's bad. It's really bad. And, you know, It's like, as we are entering this, you know, hellscape of reproductive rights, I was, I was thinking like, we're off next week, we're doing a dark week. And so the state of the union is going to happen before our next show. And the state of the union could be a monumental day for Biden. And not just because it's his first official state of the union address, but because, and according to this dope website, did Biden say abortion yet.com? President Biden has been in office for over a year and has yet to say the word abortion, not even once. In fact, the Biden-Harris administration didn't even use the word abortion in a statement commemorating Roe v. Wade, which legalized the right to an abortion. The only time abortion has been used is once in a single press statement denouncing the Texas ban. I mean, look, 
we're in the fight of our lives as access to abortion is about to be destroyed by the Supreme Court in five months. So I'm talking to you, Joe Biden. If you won't say abortion, you sure as shit won't defend it. And if you won't defend it, that means that you're willing to allow politicians and the courts to strip our constitutional rights and to allow anyone with a uterus to be reclassified in this country as property of the United States government. So if that is not your intention, Joe Biden, may I suggest that you use your first state of the union on March 1st, exactly six months to the day after Texans started living under a near total abortion ban and are threatened by bounty hunters to stand up and say the word abortion. Look, people who have abortions are Americans and we deserve a president willing to defend our humanity by saying the word abortion and doing so without shame or stigma. Exactly. Biden, you are fast approaching elder status. Shame on you. Young people are out here rising up in their states to demand reproductive access and providers are hard at work. Funds are getting folks to travel and ac accessing care with travel. Where are you, Biden? I mean, Where also, are it's, so you? Important, it's so important that we say the word abortion because abortion is health care. Abortion is needed, and if the only people willing to yell abortion from the rooftop are anti-abortion wingnuts, we will lose this war. We need to That's right. normalize abortion conversations with each other, with our politicians, all of this in the fight to destigmatize abortion care, which again is health care. A hundred percent. And, you know, we have most of our language from these anti-abortion zealots. And so we need to like talk with patients, people who've had abortions and providers in a way that puts abortion in a dignified moral place. Right. And I'm and I feel like their work needs to be honored and saying it is a good first step. And I'm really excited because Marie and Moji, you're about to talk to an amazing provider whose work we love and feel very excited about truth. We are so excited to welcome founder, owner, and medical director of Desert Star Family Planning in Phoenix, Arizona, and co-founder of the Arizona Reproductive Justice Coalition, Dr. Deshaun Taylor. Hello. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Taylor. Your clinic, located over in Arizona, has been providing care since 2013. And last July, when we visited with Operation Save America's descent on Phoenix, the Arizona legislature had just passed some really terrifying abortion restrictions. And now more have dropped this year in 2022. What kind of bans are you facing and what are the biggest barriers to care in Arizona right now? Well, it was great seeing the AAF team um, during the summer. It, it was a nice um, to be at. Uh, thought of and cared for, and uh, it was great uh, time with everyone, despite the the crazy folks kind of descending upon our city. Uh, Phoenix has become a favorite of these uh, campaign tours um, against uh, access to abortion care. So there were several really bad bills that made their way through the legislative session and one was, was able to make it out, and that was a bill that banned abortion for genetic diagnoses. Arizona already has some of the most egregious restrictions on abortion care um, in the country. We have just been fortunate up to this point to be able to litigate an appeal to um, a uh, appellate court that um, upholds the constitutional right to abortion care. And so that is something that other states, um, people in other states have not had the luxury of. And this just really shows the state that we are in right now as we await the Supreme Court's decision on the, the Dobbs versus Jackson Women's Health Organization case that would likely overturn Roe v. Wade um, that being able to depend on the courts was a luxury that had, had that no longer exists for us, right? And so um, just like other state legislatures, we are having um, additional abortion bans dropped um, this session that we're trying to fight back 
uh, beat back. And it's like someone like wrote these things and kind of passed them around to all of the conservative, uh, so-called conservative legislators. And was like, hey, you know, let's let's have fun with these while we wait for the Supreme Court to push things to the state so we can all be an abortion together in all the states. But what these things do, though, is it creates a chilling effect. Um, it creates confusion and it makes people believe that they no longer can have an abortion. And so when people are unsure, uncertain, then they may wait longer to seek abortion care. Um, they may try to self-manage their own abortion care. Um, and of course, people who have means will just go to uh, a neighboring state when they actually could still have their abortion in their own state, but they don't realize because of all of everything that's going on that it's still possible for them to do so. Yes, um, and to remind <clears throat> folks too, Dr. Taylor, of this context in Arizona, you already have to have, you already, as a provider, you have to read a scripted mandate to the folks that are calling. You already have a 24 hour waiting period. So like you said, this is scary. This is building and it's, it's unmatched what you're seeing now. And it's coming at this time. And I know Moji's going to have way more questions. Moji's going to go into post row, but Arizona already isn't in a good place just to remind folks with these restrictions. This is Moji from Feminist Buzzkills live talking with Dr. Taylor from Desert Star Family Planning about the state of abortion care in Arizona. Uh, so Arizona has a pre-road abortion ban that's been on the books, but hasn't been enforced because while well, it's unconstitutional, uh, but we don't know what's gonna happen this spring. Um, we anticipate the potential gutting of Roe v. Wade. And so how have you been preparing for and leading the resistance in Arizona? First and foremost, just holding space to have those emotions about, oh my effing God, we are actually here and we didn't need to be. Um, and then just being in that place for a moment and and then trying then starting to say okay what can we do because ultimately should roe v wade no longer be the law of the land then it's going to going to be up to the states to either protect or take away the right for their uh citizens to have uh, abortion care available to them and so as you mentioned arizona does have a pre-roe ban and it has not been enforced um, since Roe v. Wade, since the Roe v. Wade decision. And so there had been attempts to repeal this law more recently, um, a couple of legislative sessions ago, and it was unsuccessful. And so now with the Supreme Court decision looming, there is really a renewed effort to proactively to get that legislation repealed. And so the legislation makes it a criminal offense to provide abortion care, um, to advertise, to refer um, someone for abortion care. And so we have um, a couple of legislative champions well, um, who have uh, sponsored a bill in the House to repeal this law, um, which is ARS, 13-3063, I believe it is. And we have a senator who has also submitted a, a bill to the Senate to try to repeal these this outdated restriction. Um, but as a provider, as a physician, for me, um, I always want to kind of go out swinging, so to speak. Like I definitely, know that people are already self-managing their abortions, um, more so um, in our state as abortion care over the course of years of restrictions being passed, being condensed down into mainly only being available in the Phoenix metro area. And so we have people in rural Arizona who already are lacking access and, and are self-managing um, their abortion care, which with our current methods is safe. But I also feel like I don't want to just lay down and say, okay, we're not going to fight and people can just self-manage their abortions. I don't feel like that's the answer either. And so we have a coalition of um, larger organizations and grassroots organizations 
who have come together to uh, work together to beat back some of the bad legislation that's being dropped currently. And then I also have formed an alliance of black led organizations for reproductive justice um, to do proactive um, work, working with legislators who dropped the proactive bills to uh, try to repeal that outdated law and also um, repeal the telemedicine ban that we have on abortion in Arizona. Um, and, uh, and just trying to increase access to care for Arizonans in the face of the possibility that it would um, no longer be federally mandated for Arizona to comply with providing abortion care. And so that's kind of where we are. Um, we're kind of like holding this tension of fighting back versus trying to push forward. Um, and it, it, it's definitely a, a line to toe. We have covered a breadth of information. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Taylor. We're out of time right now. We will be sure to talk to you again in the future. Thank you. It was a pleasure. I look forward to it. Please follow Dr. Taylor's reproductive justice organization, Desert Star Institute for Family Planning on social media and donate to help them grow their critical work, desertstarfp.org. Coming up, Liz sits down with the amazing comedy duo Frangela to talk shit about those who, well, deserve it. But first, do you remember that Oklahoma mess hotline thing I told you about earlier today? Well, take a look at the kind of support you'll probably get if it becomes an actual thing. Many states are now trying to pass these anti-abortion bills that spend millions of taxpayer dollars to create a hotline that you would have to call before you can get an abortion in that state. And surprise, surprise, they don't give you any information about abortion. Here's what it looks like when you call. Good afternoon. Thank you for calling the hotline. Press one for crisis pregnancy options. And if you'd like to report roadkill, press two. My birth control failed and I missed a period. I think I need an abortion. What's your name, dear? Emma. Okay, Emma, we are here to support you. If you are here to support your baby, have you considered giving your baby up for adoption? Uh, no, I want an abortion. That's why I'm calling this damn hotline. You know, we have an insanely high maternal mortality rate in this state, right? God has mysterious ways. Okay, if you're not gonna tell me anything about abortion, are you going to help me with the birth? We'll make sure to pray for you. Are you going to help me pay my bills? You've always got your bootstraps. Are you gonna help with anything? We are confident that in two to three years, we might be able to help with some diapers. Cool. Good talk. God bless. In the systems of oppression, the people are represented by two separate yet equally important groups. Those who have never been granted justice and the real victims. White parents whose kids are forced to learn at school that racism is real. These are their stories. <laughs> Feminist Buzzkills Live, the show that never wants to get on Johnny Weir's bad side. I'm Liz Winstead, and joining me now are two of the most hilarious women on the planet. You know them from the Sexy Liberal Tour and their amazing podcast, The Final Word. Please welcome Francis Collier, Angela V. Shelton, a.k.a. Frangela. Hello. Hi, friends. Hi. How are Hi. you? Hi, we're great. How Going are you? Crazy. How are you? I mean, okay. I know every time we get to the comics in the show, they're like, okay, you guys are, that was just so much information and shit is even crazier than I ever even thought. <laughs> and that's true. So um, I'm so excited y'all are here because you're my favorite people to drag just garbage humans for filth. You're so good at it. You're just pinpoint on it. And right as we started taping the show, we got the breaking news that Tish James, who is America's like America's national treasure, uh, just got word that she can haul in Trump and his trash ass children in for questioning. <laughs> I just, we just want to know when the ticket sales start. That's fabulous. I know. When do ticket sales start? Let's do it. I, I really seriously will get a posse right now. Don't you just want to stand out front of the building and be like, hey, y'all you, go see Tish. You're going to yes. see Tish. <laughs> yes. It'd be so great. And just sell popcorn. It'd be really, really good to just like, we can make money off of it. I would love it. Um, 
so okay so here's the thing it is you guys pick somebody every every week who is like you know just you look at the trash of the every week on your podcast who are some folks as we're looking at you know i think the biggest story in reproductive news this year that people were like <gasps> hold my pearls was the fact that texas decided that they were gonna just uh bounty hunt people who were helping folks get abortions and i could not wait to hear how you what your what your initial reactions were to it and and how you just feel about what is happening just first i started packing a bag to go to arizona and then i was like oh wait i gotta go to oklahoma wait i gotta go everywhere i know it's true absolutely you know and and i'm i'm telling you I, everybody we're gonna we're gonna get in the hoopty and we're going to ride out. It is time, okay? We're this time to ride out on all these motherfuckers. Yes. I mean, and I think, like, what does it take, right? What does it take for people to get pissed off to actually get in the hoopty? I just, I, let let Francis and I park in, in, in like, a handicapped parking space for 20 minutes and see what the court system does to us. I am trying to get my mind around how they think that we are all just going to sit here repeatedly while they take away our rights and take away and act like we can't do anything and that we're the only people who the laws are subject to. It's absolutely, it's beyond infuriating and it's making me feel personally insane. Yeah, and also we all know this, you are two black women. Uh, we know how these laws affect everybody. We know that someone who looks like me who's 30 years younger and still has workable eggs. I mean, I use my uterus for storage now, but um, who are looking, you know, can go anywhere they need, right? But like, when it comes to that, it's frustrating and maddening and also it's white supremacy. Right, absolutely. Abortion has always been a rich woman's and a rich white woman's game, okay? Mm -hmm. Because they, it has always been available to the wealthy. And, and the reason why we have Roe v. Wade is to take care of everyone and to make sure that we all have access. But what we see that's what's happening right now in this country is voting rights being attacked. You know, not only are they trying to roll back our abortion rights, they're rolling back our our voting rights. In a second, you'll be black. You can't have access to an abortion. You don't have access to change that at all as well. And we have become a nation that's anti-science. That's right. Anti-education. That's right. This is Feminist Buzzkills Live. We're talking with Frangela about the state of abortion, the state of voting rights, the state of what it means to be a woman and especially a black woman in this country. Uh, what are some things that y'all are seeing as you're writing and looking and paying attention? Like, where is your focus going right now so much? Like when, when you wake up in the morning, like, who are you waiting to fuck up? Like, who are you just like, okay, I wake up every morning and 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 my first thought is, what the fuck we got to do to get these motherfucking Trumps in jail? What do yes. they have to do to go to jail? Because, see, I can go to jail for a thought, for existing, you know? Let somebody, let me come out here and try to spend a, a possibly counterfeit $5 bill someplace and see where I end up at the end of the day. And mm -hmm. I've, I've literally had it. Like, I, I was like, I'm starting to... I, I, I need a pitchfork. I need something. I need a torch. I don't, you know, like, I, this is out of control. And voting rights and, and obviously abortion rights. And for so long, we have been told, Francis, how many times have we been sitting on a stage or sitting someplace with some well-intentioned, lefty, progressive, white, cis men, straight men telling us, don't worry about abortion rights. There's no, no way the Supreme Court, there's no way the Supreme Court is going to attack abortion rights. Don't worry about that. They won't do that. How many times have we sat there and had been told don't get tired don't get upset don't worry about it and here we are and here we are here we are and you know and every and they are trying to take all of our rights and th this is my my bag to all the young women who are 30 and under right 30 to 18 make sure that you're registered to vote yes. make sure that you are using your voice because they are taking, this is your right. Let me tell you something. I got rocks in my womb right now. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm you know, mm -hmm. ain't nothing gonna grow right now. 
but mm -mm. I'm, but I'm here for you, and I'm here for the next generation. That's right, and, the, and that's why I love y'all. We have to go. It goes so fast. Your power, your humor is so incredibly brilliant. We all come back on and be part of our posse because we love you so much. Any and every time. Oh my God! Yay! Um, we'll see you at Tish's you. office. You, yeah, we'll see you at Tish's office. Angela Francis, the one and only Frangela. Thank you so much. If you want to learn all about Frangela, listen to their pod. You can go to frangela.com for all things Frangela. Oh my God, I love them so very, very much. Um, where are we at? We are in our. We are closing out the show. It went so fast. Holy moly, Rocky! Mm -hmm. We are at the tail end. We're at the tail end. So much information. And I love Frangela bringing the fire to close us out. What'd you learn, guys, this week? Who's go? Moji, what'd you learn? Oh, this is easy. I've learned that calling um, Florida's 15-week abortion ban generous is a little bit like calling Gogurt a food product. Sure, next to Tide Pods, it looks like food, but is it really? I don't think so. Fair. Uh, you know, basically, you know what they say about pregnant people who want abortions? If you can't feed them, track them. Now do we got Marie? Yes. Maybe <laughs> we could get Joe Biden to say the word abortion if we get him a new puppy named abortion. Ooh, no, he'll just give idea. it back. Don't you remember? <laughs> he gave it back. I'm done. Koji, <laughs> take us out. Anyway, that's our show. I want to thank Dr. Taylor and Frangela for joining us. To learn more about Dr. Taylor's work in Arizona, go to desertstarfp.org. And you can check out all things Frangela at frangela.com. Marie. We are off next week, but back March 3rd with Supreme Court expert Dahlia Lithwick to talk about Biden's SCOTUS pick and what it means for abortion rights. Plus comedian and author Beth Lapidus, Liz. That's right. And it's the AAF activism alert. So we're continuing our adopt a clinic drive. So you can help out with a clinic near you or not so near you with much needed resources and supplies by going to our resources page at aafront.org slash resources. And for Black History Month, each Friday, we turn over our social channels to a reproductive justice organization whose work we want you to learn about. This Friday, we are featuring new voices for reproductive justice working to achieve the optimum in health and well-being for Black women and girls and their families and communities. That's right. And remember, support your feminist buzzkills by liking and subscribing on the Abortion AF YouTube channel and by making a donation at aafront.org. And if you miss the show live, you can watch us anytime on YouTube or you can listen to the broadcast in pod form. This episode drops Sundays wherever you get your pod fix. Finally, even when it's so cold, that the lakes are frozen. This Ohio politician still dropped trow to show his whole ass. Additionally, if you open this up to ice fishing, while on the surface it sounds good, then what happens next year? Does someone come back and say, I want an ice shanty? on Hudson mm. Springs Park for X amount of time. And if you then allow ice fishing with shanties, then that leads to another problem, prostitution. And now you got the police chief and the police department involved. Just data points to consider. Feminist Buzzkills Live is a production of Abortion Access Front. Subscribe to our YouTube at aafront.org slash fbksub. Okay, here's how Miro works. See, it's amazing. What's everyone doing at David's desk? Ever since marketing started using Miro's collaborative online whiteboard, he thinks all our other teams should sign up. Why? He says Miro's making his meetings disappear. And if every team gets on it, that means even less meetings. They're using Miro for brainstorms, mind maps, customer research. So could we use Miro instead of having another 100 meetings for every round of feedback? Yep. You can comment, react to ideas, even leave a recording on the board. And what about presentations? There are Miro templates for that. How do you know so much about Miro? 
I've actually been using it all along. I just used a Miro board to plan the best vacation. Okay, I'm on board. See how Miro users save up to 80 hours every year by meeting less and doing more. Get on board at Miro.com with three boards free forever. That's M-I-R-O dot com.